If you have $1,000 that you're ready to invest, you are in the right place because today I'm gonna be going over how you should be investing your first $1,000 the right way. What's up everybody, I'm Jaspreet Singh from the MinorityMindset.com where money minds rethink rich. When you're getting started off as an investor, there's two different things that you can invest. You can invest your money, that's the most obvious thing, or you can invest your time through your labor. The thing that differentiates wealthy people and financially educated people from everybody else is when wealthy people and financially educated people make money, they they reinvest this money because they understand that your income, whether it's from your job or your business, it's not going to make you rich. Your investments are what will make you wealthy and rich. And so what wealthy people and financially educated people are doing is they're making money and now they're investing it that way their money's working hard to earn them more money. Now this comes with its own fair share of pros and cons because the good news is you can start investing your money with as little as $100. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can invest your first $1,000. But the bad news is if you just have one thousand dollars to your name and you invest this money into a passive investment you are not going to become rich overnight but a thousand dollars is a very good start and now if you blend this money with your time through your labor now you can grow your money even faster now before i get into how you can actually invest your one thousand dollars a couple housekeeping rules First, if this is the only $1,000 you have to your name, you need to first build some savings. You need to have a savings cushion because life will happen and you don't want to go into credit card debt when your car breaks down. So you want to make sure you have a little bit of savings before you start investing your money. Second, if you have high interest debt, if you have credit card debt, other things like that, where you're paying 10, 12, 15, 25% a year in interest on this debt, pay this off first. If you don't, then it'll almost be kind of like walking around with a 1,000 pound weight chained to your leg because now you're trying to go forward, you're trying to build wealth, but you got this weight chained to you that's holding you back. And so if you have this high interest debt, pay that down first because this debt is skinning you alive. If you have low interest debt, we're talking about student loans, mortgages, then yeah, you can kind of work around that. Now this depends on your risk tolerance. I'm not saying that's what you should do, but if you have high interest debt, then you definitely want to be paying down your high interest debt before you start investing your money. Now that we got that out of the way, when it comes time to actually investing your $1,000, there's a couple of different ways that you're gonna invest this money. You can invest this money the active way. This is now when you're investing your money and your time through labor and the passive way where you're only investing your money. These are the two different things that I'm gonna be talking about, but before I get into that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below and a quick word from our sponsor, Fundrise. If you are interested in investing in real estate, but you don't wanna deal with the headache of managing tenants and buying whole properties, you can invest in crowdfunded real estate with Fundrise with as little as $1,000. So if you wanna learn more and start investing with our sponsor, Fundrise, I got the link to how you can do that in the description below. Starting with the active way to invest your money, there are a ton of businesses out there that are very successful today that started with less than $1,000. Like Minority Mindset started off with less than $1,000 and now we are a full financial media company. The whole idea with actively investing your money is you are going to invest this $1,000 plus you're also going to invest your own time. So this might be your own brain power, your own thoughts, your own creativity, your own labor, whatever it is to help grow this money that you're investing into your company. And so here, you're essentially gonna be starting your own business because you're gonna take this $1,000 and you're gonna use your own knowledge and your own labor to grow this money. Maybe you're gonna go out and buy something and sell it for a higher price. Maybe you're gonna start flipping something. Maybe you're gonna start an e-commerce store. Maybe you're gonna start a blog online. You can start something with this $1,000 with your own effort to grow this $1,000 into something a whole lot bigger. Now, before I go too deep into the different things that you can do right now to grow your money, the thing that I want you to understand here is you can make way more money actively invest your money than you would by passively investing your money. Now, there is more risk here because you're essentially starting your own business, but you have the opportunity to make a lot of money because there's no limit to what kind of returns you can see when you start your own business. Now, when you do start your own business, there's two things that you have to understand. Every business works this way. I don't care what type of company, what kind of business you want to start. Every single business works this way. So businesses all have two components. Component one is the product and component two is the customers. If you have a product and you have customers that are buying your product, you have the things that you need in order to build a successful business. Every single business needs these two components in order to be successful. Now, your product can be anything. 
Your product could be something you find off of Alibaba or AliExpress in China. Your product can be something that you create. Your product could be your services. Your product could be your labor if you like doing things like landscaping or painting. Your product could be your mind if you're an accountant or if you're a consultant. So your product can be a product, a physical product or a service. Customers are now the people that are going to give you money for the value that you provide. Now, thanks to the internet, finding customers is much more accessible. Not necessarily easy, but much more accessible than before. Because back in the day, before we had the internet, if you had a product and you wanted customers, the most common way that you would find customers is you'd have to rent a very expensive office space or a storefront. And if you wanted to get a storefront in a prime time location, it's going to cost you a lot of money. And so your customers were kind of reserved to people within 20 or 25 miles of your office. Nowadays, you can target customers from all around the globe thanks to social media, thanks to the internet. Now, the downfall with that is you're going to be competing against everybody in the world. So you have to be a little bit more clever here with digital marketing. But if you can understand how digital marketing works, now you have the whole world on your fingertips as customers, and you just need to have the right product to market to your customers. This is where the more creative you are, the more money you can make. The first real business that I ever started was an event planning business. I started working at weddings and I got to know a lot of the DJs. And because I knew all these DJs and I knew a lot of people, I got into this kind of party hosting business. I was hosting college parties. And so what I would do is I would go to venues, clubs, restaurants, and I would talk to these venues about hosting parties. So I would talk to the venue and say, hey, can I rent out your club or your restaurant for a night? And I would try to do that where I wouldn't have to pay the club owner, the venue owner, anything. Now I would rent out the space and then I would spend some money. I started off with probably like two or 300 bucks. So it wasn't really a lot of money, but I would spend a little bit of money trying to get the word out about this event. And now I would work with DJs who I knew so they wouldn't charge me anything. They would take a percentage of revenue would make at the door because I would charge a cover fee, 10 or $20 for you to come into the event. And the DJ would take a percentage of that. And the restaurant or the bar or the club, they would take whatever money they made off of drinks. Now, I wasn't into party. I don't drink. I just got into this business because it was the only thing that I knew. And so that's how I got started. And I didn't need a lot of money because I was creative. I knew the right people and I was able to talk to people. So I got customers by spending a little bit of money in marketing, getting the word out there. It's even cheaper now because you can use social media, but I did kind of more traditional marketing then with flyers and things like that. My product was this event. And so I'd connect the two and that's how I started making some money. If you're good with your hands and you don't mind getting dirty, another few products that you could do are potentially auto detailing or landscaping work or painting work. And so now this is your product. You know that you can detail cars really nicely. You know that you can do landscaping work really nicely. You know that you can paint homes really nicely. You gotta get customers who are gonna pay you to do this work. And so what do you do? Now you can do flyers, you can do Facebook advertising, you can do Instagram marketing. And now you essentially, you wanna find people in your area who have money, who have these needs. They wanna get their car detailed or they wanna renovate their homes. And so you wanna connect with these people use your money now either to get some tools or to get that marketing that way you can get in front of these people and you can let them know hey i'm starting this new company where i can do auto detailing landscaping painting whatever and now you can get the customers in order to do that and this is again where you can be creative maybe you give this customer a 50 percent off discount if they refer you a friend or maybe you even give this customer a free auto detail if they're willing to put a flyer up on the front of their lawn or if they're willing to tell their friends about it. So, you know, you really just got to be creative here because you want to build a customer base that you're just going to keep coming back again and again and again. And you want to be able to find more customers. That way you can increase your product because at the end of the day, if you are auto detailing or landscaping and it's just you, you're not going to be able to scale. However, if you can bring on more people with you, this is difficult. It's not easy to do, but if you can bring on more people, now you can scale if you can work on growing this. So if you can grow this, you'll be able to grow this. If you're not the type of person who wants to get the hands dirty or do all this physical labor, then you can come on the internet. Now you have a whole list of products that you can have. You can start an e-commerce store. And so now you can buy products from China where you can create your own product and sell them to customers on Amazon or your own e-commerce site. You can start a blog. You can do affiliate marketing. You can start a podcast. You can start a YouTube channel. And now your goal is to build an audience. Even if you have an e-commerce store, you want to have a large social presence. That way you can have people constantly coming to your store to buy your products. 
The stores that make the most money on the internet are not just the random kind of stores that have no internet presence, that don't have a blog, that don't have an Instagram page. It's the pages, it's the companies that have large social presences, that have large blog presences, because now people are already watching your content. And now when you go onto your Instagram page with 100,000 followers, and you say, hey, we're having a Black Friday sale, or hey, we're having a 20% off sale this weekend only, you have a lot of people that are seeing your posts because if you have 100,000 followers who are interested in your product and they see that you're having a sale, now you're automatically showing your product to the right customers, right? So the internet is kind of like the new age digital real estate because if you own a piece of this digital real estate, because if you have a large social presence, you have a large blog presence, now people are already seeing your content. And now what do you do? You just market them your product. If you have a blog and you don't have your own product, well now you can use advertising as your product. You can become an affiliate marketer for other companies in your niche. So if you have a fitness blog, you can partner with other protein supplements. Now this isn't a product that you created, but you can partner with another protein company and you can market them on your product. And if anybody buys this product from your website, you get paid. So there's an unlimited way to make money if you have this kind of digital real estate on the internet. You just have to have the customers. Who are the customers? Well, this can be people who follow you on your website or your social media. You just want to make sure that you have the right products for these customers. Even for us, I'll show you the way Minority Mindset works right now. The way we work is we try to put out valuable education, valuable content that's fun to watch, and then people watch our content, and then we market products that we think are good. So this part is hard. If you are a brand and you want to work with us, it is very difficult to work with us. We reject like 99% of the brands that want to work with us, but the brands that I love, that I personally would use myself, I will market these products to our audience because I support these brands. I would use these brands myself and I believe in them. That's one of the reasons why I think that we have been able to grow so fast is because people realize that we're not sitting here promoting crap all day. And so like in this video, I talked about Fundrise. Fundrise is one of our products, one of our sponsors that we work with. When people use Fundrise through us, we get paid, right? I don't try to kind of dance around that topic. I make it very clear. We get paid when you use one of our affiliate partners, but that's the way that we work. We don't create Fundrise, we work with them. But if somebody watches our videos, they like our products, they like what we say, then you can support us by using our affiliate partners. A few other ways that we make money is one through our newsletters. We have a daily financial newsletter and these newsletters break down what's going on in the finance and business world. And in these newsletters, we have sponsors. We have a blog, which we drive revenue through advertising and affiliate partnerships. And we also have a few classes that we sell. And so these are the different products that we have. And now we have customers, this is our audience, people who are interested in learning more about financial education, people who wanna be financially educated, and we connect customers with the right products. Now, the thing that makes us different from a lot of kind of your traditional brands is we don't try to shove products down customers' throats. We're not coming here on YouTube selling, 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 selling. 80 or 85% of our content has no products mentioned at all. This is what makes us different. Most of our content has no product pitches at all. Most of our content is completely free. But if you wanna get that extra little bit, that's our classes. Or if you wanna get the extra little bit on your kind of products, that's where we occasionally market our products. I started Minority Mindset on YouTube making videos with my cell phone in front of a white wall. It cost me a few hundred dollars. And so if you have a thousand dollars, you can start up your own business idea. You just gotta understand the product and the customer. You gotta know what your product is and you gotta know who this customer is. And now you gotta use your money smartly and creatively to get customers to buy a product. That's the essence of now actively investing your money. Once you kind of get an idea of what you're doing, the next thing you got to do with this money is you got to make sure that you're learning, okay? Because the thing that can accelerate your growth, the thing that can help you go from zero to a thousand to ten thousand to a hundred thousand to a million is if you understand how to grow your business, if you know how to grow this active investment. And the one of the easiest ways to do that is just by learning from other people. That could mean you're reading books, that could be watching YouTube videos, that could mean buying classes. I have bought a ton, a ton of online courses from people that are doing things because when you learn from them, now you can accelerate your growth because you're learning from other people that understand digital marketing. You're learning from people that understand email marketing. You're learning from people that understand Facebook advertising. And so yes, it does make sense to invest in some of these courses when you have a need for these courses and if you understand the real kind of purpose of this course. Because I think where kind of people make mistakes in this online course space 
is they start taking these online courses hoping they're going to get rich quick, but they have no idea what they're going to use this course for. And so you, if you have this business right here, or if you have this kind of thing that you're working on, and now you have a specific thing that you want to learn, like let's say you want to learn how to grow your blog quickly. Now, if you take a course on how to grow your blog, that information you can plug in right here as opposed to just taking a random course and thinking that you're gonna get rich quick. When I started getting involved in real estate, I went to a real estate seminar where somebody pitched a course on real estate wholesaling. And this course was $3,500, which was a lot of money for me back then. And I decided to make that investment about the $3,500 course. And I didn't make any money for the first four months. But after about four months, I started closing deals in the real estate wholesaling space. And real estate wholesaling, your deals, once you close them, they can be kind of big. Like my first deal was $10,000. And so, yeah, I made my money back. It took me a lot of time, took me a lot of effort. But then a few months after I started making money, I stopped doing real estate wholesaling. It wasn't me. And so another thing that you have to understand is you have to be adaptable. I went through kind of business after business after business before I started to really realize what my passion was, what I liked doing, and where my talents were. And so this is one of those things where you have to be just kind of adaptable because we don't learn entrepreneurship. We don't learn how to grow our money in school. And so when you're learning, you have to be willing to adapt. You have to be willing to grow. You have to be willing to make mistakes and you have to be willing to learn. And one of the ways you're going to learn is when you realize that something is not for you, then you have to be able to switch. Now, the good thing here is even if you kind of stop a bunch of different things that you're working on, you're going to learn something from everything that you do. I mean, even if you start an e-commerce store and then you start a landscaping business and then you realize that you want to start a podcast, you're going to learn something from your e-commerce store and your landscaping business that you can use in your podcast that other people don't know. And so you're going to learn things along the way, but you just got to make sure that you keep moving forward and you keep trying new things because that's the only way you're going to learn and it's the only way you're going to grow. So if you only have $1,000 or so to invest and you don't have $1,000 every single month coming in to invest even more, then you got to work on growing your income. The way you can do that right now is by actively growing your money. This might mean starting your own business or starting your own side hustle. And the way to make that work is you got to understand products and customers. So you need to use your $1,000 to know what your product is going to be. Maybe you got to buy some products and then you got to find customers. This might mean advertising. This might mean organic marketing, finding customers through your social media or through your blog. Once you can connect this, then you will be able to grow this active income. Now, once you start growing your active income, that's when you have to start growing number two, your passive income. Your passive investments are what is going to make you wealthy without you having to physically work. So now, if you have this active money coming in, this might be through your job, this might be through your business or your side hustle like we just talked about. As soon as you start making this money, you got to start hammering this money here into your passive investments because this is what's going to make you long-term wealth. And so what you see a lot of wealthy people do is either they're making money from the job or they're making money from the business and now they're taking as much money as possible and they're putting that here into their passive investments. Now, there's a couple of different ways if you have $1,000, and this is $1,000 consistently coming in. Because if you only have $1,000, then passively investing in money is not going to make you the greatest returns, but you can do that. I mean, I'll talk about what the type of returns you're going to see, but there's a couple of ways that you can kind of get these returns on your money through your passive investments. One of the easiest ways to do that is through an ETF. So this is through the stock market. The stock market is a place where you can go and invest in companies stocks. And so when you invest in the Amazon stock or the Apple stock or the Chipotle stock or the Lululemon stock, you become one of the owners of these companies. And so an ETF now allows you to become an owner, not just of one company, but of a whole basket, a whole group of companies. Because if you want to be a passive investor, now you don't want to spend that time to constantly research companies, constantly read their earnings columns, constantly see how much money they're making, what they're doing. Because if a company starts to go down and all your money is in one company, now your whole investment goes down. With an ETF, this stands for Exchange Traded Fund. Now you're investing in a whole group of stocks. And there's a whole bunch of different kinds of ETFs out there. They can invest in ETFs that give you exposure to the top 500 companies in the stock market. A couple of examples of that would be VOO or SPY SPY. Now I'm not telling you what to invest in, just an example. But those two ETFs give you exposure to the S&P 500. That's the top 500 companies in the stock market. So if you just want to invest in the general stock market, those two ETFs will allow you to do that. You can invest in ETFs that give you exposure to tech companies. You can invest in ETFs that give you exposure to growth companies. You can invest in ETFs that give you exposure to dividend stocks. You can invest in ETFs that give you exposure to REITs or healthcare. So you have ETFs that give you exposure to really anything that you want. 
And so if there's an industry or a sector that you want to invest in, but you don't know what company to invest in, or you don't know how to do the research, then an ETF is a great way to go. And the easiest way to find these ETFs is literally just go to Google and search blank ETF. So if you want to search technology ETF, healthcare ETF, whatever it is, you can search these ETFs, find this ETF, look at what companies they invest in. If you like those companies, then that could be an investment that you're investing in. Now, if you want to make this successful, the thing that makes past investing the most successful for people is you have to consistently keep investing money into this ETF. That might be every two weeks, every time you get paid, or every month. So if you want to become a successful passive investor, especially through ETFs, this is something that you have to keep consistently investing your money in. The thing that I like about ETFs is you can invest in ETFs with as little as $100. So now anytime you get paid, you want to take a portion of your paycheck and you want this to automatically go into your stock brokerage account and have this money invested into your ETFs. That way every month your account is going to keep growing and hopefully your ETFs are going to keep growing as well. So now you keep putting more fuel into the fire and now you're just building this wealth on the side. If you do want to learn more about how to invest in ETFs passively, and do this in a way where now anytime you get paid, this is gonna automatically go into your investment accounts. Our team has put together an amazing article on our website, theminoritymindset.com, that walks you through how to passively invest your money in the stock market. So if you wanna learn more about that, I'll link that article for you in the description below. Now, I'm gonna to try to be respectful for your time because there's a lot of different ways that you can invest in stocks passively, and they all follow the exact same model as what I said for ETFs. So if you wanna invest in dividend stocks, or growth stocks or whatever, you can just do the exact same thing here where you automatically passively invest your money into these stocks every time you get paid. So I'm not gonna go over every different type of investment in the stock market, but you can just kind of assume that it's the exact same thing as ETFs. The second way that you can passively invest your money is by investing your money into real estate. Now, the thing about real estate is you're not gonna be able to go out with the $1,000 right now and go buy a property and have this passive investment where now you own this property and a tenant's living there, they're gonna pay you rent. You're not gonna be able to do that with $1,000. But what you can do is use something like a sponsor Fundrise and now you can invest in crowdfunded real estate. But now you're getting exposure to a portfolio of real estate properties and as these properties make money through rent, so do you. And as the value of these properties go up, you make money as well. Again, if you are interested in learning more about crowdfunding, I got the link to how you can do that in the description below. And another way that you can invest your money, this is not necessarily real estate, I mean, it could be, but is through peer-to-peer -peer lending. So you see a lot of peer-to-peer -peer lending for real estate deals where people go onto a website where they now borrow money from another person. That's why it's called peer-to-peer. Now, a person is not gonna borrow $1,000 to go out and invest in real estate. They're gonna need more money than that. But you could do peer-to-peer -peer lending to invest your $1,000 by lending this money out to somebody else. Now, peer-to-peer -peer lending has its own risks because you gotta make sure that the person that you're investing into by lending your money into them is creditworthy, that they're gonna pay you your money back. But it's another thing that you can look at and it's kind of, kind of indirectly related to real estate, but it's another way that you can passively invest your money. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on how to invest in your first rental property that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, download our free money management PDF. And as always, keep hustling. When you're investing in real estate, you have to be thinking for the next 10 years because you cannot move the property's location. I mean, if a home is beautiful, that's nice, but if it's in a really bad location,